you for a little tour around my yard. This is my little paradise. Uh, I don't go out much or travel much, so it looks a little overdone, I'll admit to that, but I love color, I love fun, just everything. I love summer thinking like summertime's a party, and that's how I always want my yard to look, like a little fiesta. Um, yeah, so I'll, come on, enjoy, I'll show you some things. Hi, I'm Katie, I'm one of the daughters, and I'm just gonna give you a little peek of some of my favorite things in my yard so far this year. Hi, I'm Casey and I have a garden and home blog and a very bad flower addiction. Today I am going to give you a tour of some of my gardens. I like a lot of wildness, a lot of rustic, and a lot of color, and a lot of veggies. So let's get started guys. Today I'm showing you a little bit of my flowers for summer. I wanted something happy after that long season. Um, I try to make my stuff real colorful, like carnival looking, and, and I'm Sandy, the mother of the daughters and my husband's name is Wayne, and um, I'm gonna show you around um, our yard today. Okay guys, I have in this container, for full shade, all the Rocapoco, double impatience, I tried to do one of each color. The proven winner, the new caladiums they had this year, are trailing plum coleus that takes sun or shade, and I always use cheap little fillers, little impatience, different colors. Full shade has loved it, I water it twice a week. Another one here as well, same concept, only I added the lotus vine. This has been simple to grow too. Water it just a couple times a week. Uh, when, when the weather gets cooler, it's gonna make a red flower, so I'm looking forward to that for something different. Here's one of my window boxes, and I just put it on the ground. It's one of the last things I did for the season. In fact, I made this the day we closed. I finally got some extra time. And a lot of this is just done with annuals. And I don't think I have uh, $30 in the whole basket, in the whole um, window box. I have some beautiful seed nicotiana. I have some of the new gumfrina. And that has bloomed the whole season. It was one little stalk and it just now has become a beautiful bush. And the Prince Millets here, they've been really interesting. The pretty lime color kind of woke up the uh, planter. Another new one that I just love that always does so well is the um, dark um, purple Alternthera. So bushy and pretty. And then of course the blue scavola that really brightens everything up. A lot of this is seed stuff that was very inexpensive. And at Wayne's Daughters you can get four in a pack for $1.49. It's time. <laughs> Wayne's been working in the heat all day. <laughs> And these are my zinnias. I just love zinnias. They're so colorful. And Wayne faithfully waters them almost every day. Those are Dreamland. Yeah, these are the Dreamland series. So one of the star varieties in my yard this, yard this year is definitely this Jade Princess Millet. It has a beautiful chartreuse leaf. It's not too tall where it's overpowering like the original millet that gets four to five feet tall. Here are my window boxes. And this is probably one of my favorite combinations that I've ever done. And in here we have the French Quarters Coleus. Right over here I've got my big begonias. That's literally what they're called, bigs. These right here are the Perfusion Zinnias. They come in the four pack. And then over here I have my seed geraniums and intermixed throughout. And the seed geraniums are only 99 cents. And then here, everyone's been asking about these guys. These are the Blue Victoria Salvia, also seeded by Farmer Wayne. Uh, they also come in the four pack. And then down here we have the blue scavola. It's super showy. You saw it in a lot of everyone else's planters as well because we all love it. That's by Proven Winners. And then over here we just got some wave petunias. Wave petunias are only 99 cents. Another shady container. I went with the, um, this was I believe the Prince Tuck grass. Not as large, not as tall. And I wanted to really show this. This was that, I believe it's the Bella Rosella. Um, Fuchsia. You can see compared to my hand, it's a really large fuchsia that trails out beautifully. Kind of obsessed with that. Creeping Jennies, they love the shade. And more of that lotus vine. Okay, this is one of my happy planters I'll tell you about. Every time I look at this, it makes me and a lot of people smile. I put the red rubum in the, more, in the middle because it is a taller pot and I want it to have more of a um, height to it in the middle. And then um, I have our pink geraniums. And then I have the peach verbena. And this new peachy keen verbena is the most beautiful color. And it's really improved, it blossoms a lot more. 
and then I put into um, uh, for a trail I just put in some purple wave petunia and then I put in some chambray verbena this is liatris it is a perennial which means it comes back every year this is the seventh year for this particular plant we sell it every spring it blossoms from now through about end of August it attracts pollinators the butterflies and bees are always around it. It's really a wonderful staple in any perennial garden. Here is one of my really large baskets. And this is one of those $100 baskets. It costs more, but look at this. And it's still beautiful. And it goes beautiful all the way up until the first frost. In here is one of my favorites. I never loved a white petunia, but this one is gorgeous. This is the proven winner trailing silver petunia and it actually has a light lavender glow to it. It's so gorgeous, it just keeps trailing. It does take maintenance of cleaning it and pinching it. And then right here, we've got the Violet Star. This is a, a petunia by Proven Winner. It's beautiful because it kind of has more of just like that little fill-in habit. I was saying I love color. Every year I spray paint my uh, planters a new color. This year I went with more this kind of tone. Um, so I kind of just start with the pot color and I work around it. This one here has been really fun and interesting. I tried a lot of new products, put them together, and it just it just keeps getting bigger. It's gorgeous. This is the Gomfrina from Proven Winners. It just gets beautiful. This is our, I believe it's just the Wizard mm -hmm. Pineapple Series or Jade that we have in the four packs for Coleus. These are the Profusion Zinnias, the apricot color. I have a big begonia here, which takes full hot sun. The trailing Vista Fuchsia Supertunia. This yellow I'm peeking through is Flambe through Proven Winners. I have the Tequila Sunrise Superbells also down here. The Lantanas, which are obviously my favorite. And I have down here the Samba Rose Portulaca. And this was new and interesting this year. This was the variegated potato vine. You'll see it throughout my planters. And I am obsessed. It does not take over like the lime green. It's just a beautiful accent. This is another one of my happy planters. I made these to match the other planters by the garage. So I'd have it all looking the same. It was an easy container to take care of. Right wing. <laughs> <laughs> yep. This is my Menards planter. It's yeah. a $38 wheelbarrow. So these are the most favorite thing in my yard this year. These are my wall hangers. This is a mixture of plants that we just tested out to see how it would do next year. Mixing in with the dragon wing begonias, the geraniums. We have some specialty petunias, the super bells. It's all the same tone and colors, but it's just different textures. When you do the same color and textures, very it just gives it a little bit more interest than what it does if it was all different colors so in here we've got the dark red martha washington geranium it's just gorgeous it's so dark and i just love it it's stunning and it's really rich looking here is my other t-rex planter i love this guy and i do one of these combinations every year all it takes is the proven winner umbrella grass king tut some of the proven winter coleuses. These are the full sun varieties, low maintenance, and the potato vines. And you got yourself your own T-Rex at home. This one here, I was out of town for a few days, so my cannas are looking a little rough, but I love the canna. These are those sun patients I am obsessed with as well. This was the trailing orange, a little licorice vine. Again, that variegated potato vine, some big begonias, and lantana more of that samba rose right throughout here this was another planter another uh, pink colored more of that potato vine i use profusion zinnias the little double ones the jolt dianthus this was the new scavola fan flower it's more of a compact i tried out this year it definitely is more compact more blooms not as long of a trailer but just enough love it these are our geranium baskets and um, these are also the 4-H baskets that we do a fundraiser with. They last just beautiful. So if you're finding that you're not getting a lot of blooms and just green, make sure that you have an open hole, good drainage on the bottom, and don't overwater. Sometimes as we get a little older, we, we kind of sit in the house a little bit more. And um, so when you got your flowers out and everything, 
it just makes you feel like getting out there and being a part of life more. And when you look at flowers, what can make you feel happier? This is an Eastern exposure garden. I grow full sun and full shade here. I get half day shade, half day sun, anything works. So I mixed in the hydrangeas with the mandevillas. These are mandevillas that we sell in the springtime in only six and a half inch pots. This is what one six and a half inch pot does. By the end of September, they will be grown all the way up this trellis here and those flowers will go through frost but this one I will bring in because I'm pretty attached to it, so. Here's my herb garden. I love doing herbs in raised beds, but I have all types of different herbs that were seeded right at the greenhouse. And I mean, look at how beautiful an herb garden can be. Intermix some flowers and other varieties like the tomatoes in here, just to add those different textures and heights. I love a wild look and this bed here it's wild. Here are my state fair zinnias. This is one of my favorite parts of the garden. What I love about the state fair zinnias is that they get nice and tall and they're perfect for cut flowers. And these are in a flat for only $13.99, a flat of $36. You can't beat that. You can't beat it. This was another shady. I have north side exposure. Very, very easy at the end. I think the last day we're open on the half price sale, I just grabbed whatever I thought and took like a shadier area and threw it in this planter and voila. I did use a little bit of regular um, Snow Crystals Alyssum. We've got the Wandering Jews, Trailing Terenias, Rockapoco Impatience. I used Dragon Wing and Big Begonias, Caladiums, Creeping Jennies, some Trailing Coleuses, and I really crammed it full because guys, it was half price. This here, huge basket, I have two of these. Um, my dad Wayne made these earlier in the season because we had a lot of these Allure orange geraniums. We filled it with that, we threw in some lantanas, and of course I had to get some other colors going in here. Here's the lantanas, this is the citrus blend. And then at the end of the season, we had a few super tunias left. I just popped them in around the sides. The Vista Fuchsia, the Honey, the Indigo Charms, and it just came together beautiful. So when people always tell me that they don't like petunias because they're too much work, I direct them towards this Vista series Super Tunia. This is Vista Fuchsia. It cleans itself. It has such amazing branching that it never gets laggy. It just keeps on getting a bigger and bigger bush. We had one a couple years ago where we ended up putting a giant pair of sunglasses on it and it looked like we had grimace in our backyard. It's really an unbelievable cool plant to have. Super easy care and this is definitely something I would direct for anybody looking for a wow factor. Throughout my gardens I add all the different types of millet grasses. It draws in the birds. The finches literally come on here. They land on here and they eat, they nibble. It's so much fun to watch. Here's my little flower corner of this raised bed and what I absolutely love are these marigolds. I was never a huge fan but once I was like, I'm just gonna put them in my garden because they're really good for deterring bad bugs. And once I put them in, I'm gonna do them every year. I think I'm becoming an old fashioned gal. I love that farm look. And I don't know, for some reason, it's bringing it all back. So this hanging basket, again, went with my color theme. Vista Fuchsia, Super Tunias, that more compact Scavola, the trailing Verbenas. I've even got Lantana and the Honey Super Tunias underneath. And I have a geranium hiding in here too, but this is out here in the wind, in the hot, hot scorching sun. Okay, so this was my $100 monster basket. It looks better in person, it's just massive. It's the tropical spreading sun impatient again right here. We have the orange geranium, marmalade lantanas. These are the bonfire begonias I'm obsessed with too. They keep trailing, they take sun or shade. And um, I've got a little of that blue verbena. This is the orange Nemesia, and it has lasted. This basket it is in full hot sun all day. I water two gallons a day, fertilize twice a week, and this is what you get. It has taken terrible wind too. Beautiful. Okay, so this is a 10 inch basket. It was $27.99. Every color of verbena, well, not every, but quite a few. And this has been in hot sun too. I just changed it over here because my house has been getting resided all summer. So I put it into a nice corner now, but this has been getting hot heat and sun all summer and it looks like this still. 
water once a day, fertilize twice a week, and this is what you've got. It looks amazing. This is my container by the road. I have a couple of these here. And again, the red rubrum, and it's, and it's top showing right now with the little plumes on top, that burgundy color. It's just growing so nice and high, and it's gonna get a little higher. Just beautiful. And then in this one, I have a lot of lantana. I have the um, pink berry color that stays pink with that little center. I call it the pinkle berry. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the famous pink geraniums. These are the calliopes that get so nice and large because it's hard to find a calliope, um, a geranium that can um, survive with all this foliage and lantana, something that gets higher. And this one gets higher. So um, the Clypes are the only ones that I would suggest putting in these big planters. And then here's some more of that chambray. And then I just put two wave plants on each side, the purple wave. This is a really pretty part of the farm since 1839. And I think this tree was from there too. From then too, it's the catawpa tree. Such an old tree, a lot of history. And when I look at all these old trees back here, I just think of how many generations of grandmas and grandpas and kids that sat under these trees chucking peas, and I could have so many pictures of that. Yeah, the catalpa tree is kind of odd. It makes these big seed pods. They almost look like big snakes or something in the tree. And they're full of pods to grow other catalpa trees. Yeah, look at that. Looks like snakes. It does look like snakes, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> this is another secret path. A little window box that Wayne did. It takes all shade, hardly any water. It has such nice uh, plants in there. It has the dragon wing begonias, the beautiful sun coleuses, even a little blue heliotrope, the beautiful vinca vines. And we kept this garden kind of wild because it just looks perfect with this farmhouse. So this particular geranium here is the Rocky Mountain Orange Geranium. I'm usually a huge fan of the Calliope geraniums, but this thing here has definitely taken the crown as my new favorite. It's blossomed continuously, even through that brutal heat we had. The color is vibrant, and I really love how the stems are longer, where they hang off the plant or go up over, so it just looks like a giant ball of color. Right here is my small little watermelon patch, and I wanted to show these because these were seeded and grown by my dad, Farmer Wayne, so let's take a look. We have three good-looking watermelons here right now. We've got uh, the three little piggies, only we're going to be the ones that are pigging out on them when they're done. Here is one of my many patches of onions. These are also from my dad, Farmer Wayne, seeded. So I wanted to be able to show some of the vegetables that they carry and how beautiful they do. Here is the cauliflower that I'm growing that was also seeded by Farmer Wayne. So I was saying my house has been resided, so we had to take my window boxes down. So I've been growing them here for the last month. Um, I again went with the same theme, the fuchsias with the orange, the sun patience. These are those cheap four pack coleus for $1.49 for four. Vista fuchsia supertunias, I've got some little verbenas hiding in there. Marmalade lantanas. And I even snuck in the back here some seed geraniums for 99 cents. The other, um, those little profusion zinnias, and they're back here too, kind of the red ones. Four for a dollar forty-nine. You cannot go wrong. This is a very reasonably priced um, window box, and I have three huge ones, and they've been amazing in full hot south side sun. These are my end of the driveway planters. Everybody always asks what I put in them. This is vertigo grass. I split the pot in half because they do get huge. It's only going to probably double in size before October comes along. Potato vine, which really overtakes, so I kind of turned it this way. A lot of goodies. I've got scavola, big begonias, lantana, four pack zinnias, honey petunias, verbenas, um, all kinds of good stuff. Here's one of the planters we did to decorate our little farm up. And this is that wasabi coleus that just gets huge and loves shade or sun, nice and bright lime color. And then these are called the megawatts. They love shade and it's a begonia and they're, they're very aggressive. These are marguerite daisies. They blossom through even a light frost. I will have these usually till around Halloween. They're up closer to the house so they do get a little bit of warmth that way too. My petunias in front here. Those are the blue waves. They're definitely my least favorite wave petunia because they don't have the branching that some of the other ones do. But that color, 
you can't really be beat and it has the most scent out of any petunia. So I want to just quickly talk about this new salvia variety that they carried this year called Heat Wave Blaze. I set my garden up for hummingbirds with all kinds of different varieties, but it's like those hummingbirds forget about every other variety when these guys are around. They are loaded with hummingbirds. I'm going to do these every single year. Out by our fire pit area, it's always hard to get the hose out here, but I still wanted planters, so I did really cool succulent planters. So I did two, three different succulents, plus then I added the secrecia and just your typical old fashioned spike and mixed all together. It looks awesome. So this is the bubblegum monster basket. I mean, it is huge. I am five foot nine and it's on just basically on a little block on the ground. Um, it's massive. I mean, I can't even <laughs> put my arms around it. <laughs> All I do is water two to three gallons every day, fertilize twice a week. I've never once cleaned or deadheaded this ever. It just does this. So it is amazing. And by October, it'll probably be out to here. It comes on like a long dress. So I'm like obsessed. <laughs> I love it. Love it. These are our red, white, and blue planters. They're all super petunias, but the super petunias go the whole season. They're nice bushy in fall. Um, they're a little different than a wave petunia. That's why they are a little more costly. Um, these have so many breaks on them. They make so many flowers and they have such a nice trail where the waves um, don't trail far as much and don't fill in as much as the super petunia does. So my favorite wave petunia is called Pink Passion. And that's all I did was I took a 10 inch basket that we sell for $15, put it in a 16 inch pot, and this is how great it is all summer long. Here is my shade planter, and this is actually a big basket from the greenhouse that I replanted into this very large container down here. In here are some fuchsias, but they're actually hidden because this here, the ibozavine, took over. This stuff can go rapid wild, all right? But in here then we also have some begonias, so really all you see now is Iboza and Begonia. So next year, really, hey guys, you can cut out everything else and just do the Begonias and the Iboza because everything else gets taken over by this guy. Here's more of my orange. Um, we have the Sun Coleus. This was Campfire. The Cannas. We have more of the Sun Patience. This is that same Gonfrina I had in the backyard. Um, this is the new one that was like an orangey red color. More of that Potato Vine, the Variegated little double profusions and I have my um, bonfire begonias here that I'm always obsessed with. Hey, we're going down to my brother's house, Uncle T's. We're gonna go down there, we're gonna go look at his famous tomatoes. We're in Kenosha and this is where I'm from and we're gonna go see his, uh, his vegetable gardens and see how the plants did. You'll get a kick out of my brother and uh, he's a little older than me, even though he says he's younger. <laughs> and um, so we're in for a good time. I buy these tomatoes at Wayne's daughter's flower farm. It's my sister's farm. So if I don't buy them, I, I probably get... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And this is what I get. Eight to ten feet tall. There's three tomato plants to each pot. Yeah, this little one here is a sucker, but you break them off. Break them off because then the suckers suck all the juice out of the plant. Oh. Now, sucker never has any tomatoes. It just gets real big and long. Oh, so by, by taking that off, you get, you get more, more tomatoes. tomatoes. That's why he's got these ropes of tomatoes like this. <laughs> That's right. Just got gorgeous. Yeah. Gosh, those things must be seven feet high. Yeah. Oh yeah. I never saw a cherry tomato bush that large, ever. See, see this up and through here? There's nothing on it. Look at that, see? Wow. Mm -hmm. See that? This, yeah. Here, oh, here's yeah. this one way up here. Look how big that is. Wow. You gotta break that off. Yes. Plus I use 80% Wayne's dirt. Yeah. Then I use 20% just cheap black dirt. Yeah. And the only reason I do that, black dirt is more heavier. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. the pots get oh, yeah. so light. They, I got them tied to the chairs in the nighttime. <laughs> <laughs> like right Look here. Look at that, tied yeah. to the bench here. I got ah. sticks hammered in the ground oh, with a rope around to hold them all up. Look at that. They're hammered in. Yeah. 
Look at this ropes of cherry tomatoes. Like I had a couple beautiful. come over the other day. And they went behind, and they went in the screener. Look at that. Oh, and they said they, they were kidding Ralph, but they wanted to come back and do their redo their wedding vows on the <laughs> Yeah. Oh, they're so healthy looking. How yeah. about the fertilizer every day? No, I fertilize maybe once a week. Yeah. I never fertilize that first. Later I do. Yeah. Oh. Oh my gosh. Look at the burpless cute. Yeah. These are really good. Yeah. You know, I never eat them, but all the neighbors come over and get them. Oh, they do? Yeah, oh. they love them. The tomatoes keep you healthy, full of lycopene. Look at this tomato plant. He's got two different kinds or three, Anthony? Two cherries and one of the bigger ones. They're all hidden in there. Meat is tomatoes, but that was really sweeter than the let, uh, large red cherry. The sun sugar is just excellent. Texture, no cracks, and so sweet. Very good. Real Italian. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah! Look at that! Look at Uncle Tony! Look, that's as high as the house. Yeah. That tomato plant. Yeah, it's folded over now. Yeah, look. <laughs> See that? Look, he's still still with those suckers every day. He pinches the suckers, <laughs> just like the old timers did yeah, every day. Yeah, you got to take that off. Yeah. See, look, <laughs> look. Yeah, he sure can grow some good tomatoes. We're ready to leave little Italy. It's been so much fun, and to see my brother's been wonderful. So here we come back to the farm. Just remember, I'll make you an offer you can refuse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>